Alrighty, Darren Urigan here on behalf of the NCAA following game two of the 2023 baseball championships here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Joined by the winning team, Baldwin Wallace, who came away with a 13-9 victory over Endicott College. From left to right, we're joined by head coach Brian Harrison, Garrett Miller, Andrew Parker, and Luke Vonderhaar. Uh, we'll just start with an opening statement from you, Coach Harrison, on uh, how the game went. Great game. Um, you know, Endicott's a very well-coached team. 45-8, and eight, we locked up with them at the Super Regional last year. So we're a little familiar with them. We flew to Boston and played them. They're, they're a very well-coached team. Van Enman is a, is a stud on the mound, but you win with pitching, defense, and base running, and our guy on the mound was special today. Um, seven and a third, um, incredible. I'm just an incredible start on the biggest stage. Proud of him. Um, Vondi, and then and in our offense, I mean, these, we've got some grown men in our lineup, and, and uh, they're just uh, incredible. Um, you know, Parker changes the game with an opposite field home run. I think he had four RBIs. Bonner hits a no-doubt home run. Um, we're just lucky to have these guys in our lineup. So, But it starts with pitching, and Garrett was incredible. Yeah, absolutely, and this is uh, actually BW's uh, first ever win here at the baseball championship, so congratulations to you four on that. Uh, we're going to pass it over to some of our media here, starting with D3 Baseball. Thanks, Coach. Right, does it feel good to be talking first, to have the first news conference after W, right? It sure does. We were, we were lucky in 24, we were lucky enough in 2014, we went to Appleton, and uh, we beat Emory ah, on the oh, all right. night. So, okay. uh, but, uh, but it gotcha. definitely feels good to be speaking first. All right. Tell us a little bit more about what Garrett was doing for you today. Obviously, the bats had a big day, and we will talk about that, but we don't want uh, Miller to get overshadowed here. His fastball, his fastball's got life. He's got great fastball command. He's a three-pitch guy. Um, and he can talk about it a little bit. And I think the fourth inning started to get a little bit of a blister, so he had to stop throwing the slider, which was unfortunate. Try to rely on his on his changeup, but his fastball command was excellent. He's got a lot of poise, a lot of presence on uh, on, on the mound. So um, he got a lot of swings, a lot of a lot of missed barrels. Missing that slider didn't seem to result in too much, maybe until the very end. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, just about around the fourth or fifth inning, I started to get a little bit of a blister when I was throwing the slider. But, um, I mean, when I had to ditch the slider, I had to focus in on just commanding the fastball a little bit better. Because early on in the game, I wasn't commanding the fastball or slider particularly well. So, um, just kind of made that in-game adjustment, speaking with Coach Hagan and Coach Harrison. It, uh, it paid off a little bit. Um, Andrew and Luke, obviously that big run, that big eight run inning, is that one of those feelings where you know everybody just starts hitting and it snowballs for everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. Uh, you know, just every hit adds to, to the guy's confidence, and the next guy up gets a little bit more confident. The next guy up gets a little, even more, a little confidence. So, um, yeah, that's that, that's what happened. And uh, you know, when when we're locked into our approach of, of hitting strikes hard, you know. I think we're we're pretty dangerous because up and down the lineup, there's guys that can that can uh, smoke the ball. So uh, yeah, a lot of momentum, a lot of momentum in that inning. Luke, that one that you hit out got out right away. Did you, other than the part of the ballpark where maybe it was a little bit of a question as to where it was going to land, how did how did you feel about that ball off the bat? I felt good. Yeah, I just uh, you know I was up 2-0 in the count, and uh, you know my thing is always uh, just swing hard so I just, I just decided to let uh, let one rip as hard as I can and and uh, it caught it well so uh, it was good for me. Andrew you follow a little bit later kind of maybe not quite put the cap around that in because you guys scored more runs after that but yeah. take us through a little bit that at bat that hit. I mean it was first pitch off a of pitching change I mean kind of just expecting like a first pitch fastball uh, kind of saw it out of his hands instantly and then just hit the white ball over the white plate and just kind of did some damage. A guy comes in in a pitching change like that and you already have a crooked number on the board. Does that make you feel a little more confident in just attacking it, whatever it's going to be? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Just, kind of, just going back to just preparation, just no matter who they put on the mound, I think all the hitters are ready for it. Mm -hmm. I could keep talking, but I should let Jim talk. Um, Coach, you'll be facing Johns Hopkins um, tomorrow. Um, the winner gets a rest day on Sunday. How do you prepare for that game? We'll go back. We'll watch a lot of video. I mean, they're good. They're you know number one seed for a reason. So um, it's going to be a great challenge for us. Uh, there's no question about that. So we'll, we we hit a little bit of scouting before the weekend, but we'll do a heck of a lot more tonight. Have a game plan. Obviously, they hit a ton of home runs. Um, so we'll try and come in with the game plan tomorrow. We'll have Nick Baldus on the mound. Nick's been great for us down the stretch. 
a three pitch mix guy that, that throws a lot of strikes. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of faith in Nick, and um, um, but you know, our boys will be ready to go. Um, Garrett, talk about pitching with the lead. Um, you got that big run, mass runs in this fourth inning. Um, what's it like to sit there and have that? Back up from your offensive guys. Yeah, no, it's it's incredible. It, it alleviates a lot of pressure, uh, but it, you gotta, as a pitcher, you gotta make sure you still keep your foot on the gas. And we always talk about whenever they put up runs, we're always trying to put up a zero after, make sure we kill momentum, make sure we uh, get the ball rolling in the right direction for us throughout the game. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, when you put up an eight spot, everything gets a little bit easier out on the mound. But definitely still had to still uh, command the ball. In fact, you came out after that eight spot and shut him down right away. Yeah. Um, can Andrew and Luke talk a little bit about what it's like to be working behind uh, behind Garrett when he's throwing? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I love I love when Garrett's on the mound because he, uh, he brings a certain presence, a certain confidence and, uh, and coolness to the mound, I think. And, uh, you know, you know he's going to be around the plate, so it's fun to play defense behind him. Uh, you know he's going to go after hitters, and and uh, most of all, you know he, he cares a, a whole lot uh, about us and our team. So it's 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 fun to play behind a guy like that. Um, so kind of based on what Vondi said too. I mean, when Garrett is working fast and you know gets out, uh, kind of everybody on the team just comes alive, and we want to just play for each other. Um, like I mean, Coach Harrison says that pitching and defense. Or why we win games along with base running. So when G is able to shut it, uh, Endicott down after he put up a eight spot, it kind of just adds more uh, life to us. I didn't have Definitely. more questions. Yeah, uh, whoever wants to answer it, the fact that you played a team that you played last year, even though geographically you're so far apart, was that an advantage? Was that you know just nothing because there were different teams? Or coach, how did you feel about that? I guess. Well, I, you know, anytime you play a team that you respect a lot, I think that's always an awesome opportunity to, to play them again. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, Brian does an incredible job with those guys. Um, they've got a lot of older boys in their in their lineup. It's pretty much the same team they had a year ago. They're just a year older. So, um, so uh, we didn't think much about it, to be quite honest with you, but it's always good to play a team that, that plays the game the right way. And then Andrew and Luke, weird question. I noticed how you guys put your bats out in front of the dugout before every game. Is there a, a specific system to that, and why? Why do you guys do that? Is it a, uh, a superstition that's, thing? That is. That's in the hands of one uh, DJ Doria, who's a, a, a catcher for us, and uh, he is he is solely in charge of organizing and, and bringing the bats to life before the game. So. Um, he does the line, he does it right, and uh, he's rolling right now, just as hot as us. Get him out in the sun, right? Yeah, warm, warm the bat. Yeah, warm the oh, bat. literally warming up. Picturing some, I'm picturing some kind of like incantation or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who knows what he does? A blessing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, I mean, really just one question for you, Coach. Um, just kind of an observation we saw today in the, in the Misericordia Johns Hopkins game. I mean, I know obviously you proved in this game you guys can swing it with the best of them and, and drive the ball, but Misericordia was really effective in kind of putting some pressure on the Johns Hopkins defense, whether that be running, whether that be bunting, all that kind of stuff. Is that something, without giving up too much away, that you feel like your team is capable of um, and, and could do tomorrow? Yeah, we think we can win in, in a, a bunch of different ways. You know, uh, Pete does an incredible job with Misericordia. I think we play him usually twice a year. Um, and. Uh, and he does an incredible job with those guys. There's no question about it. So Hopkins is new. We've never played them before. Um, but it's you know we'll go back and watch the film a little bit and try and find ways that we think we can create an advantage on our side for sure. Yeah, and I guess last thing would be for Garrett, um, kind of just as the representative from the pitching staff, uh, you only had to use two guys today. I know that's kind of coach's job to decide who pitches and who doesn't. But just talk about kind of what that does for the team going forward, only having to use two arms. Yeah, I mean, in a series like this, the goal as a starter is to not only put your team in a position to win, but set the pitching staff up well for the week. Um, and so, you know, the, the goal is always to go at least at least six or seven, take some pressure off the bullpen for the week, and I think we did a good job of that today. Absolutely. Any other questions from BW here? All good? Okay. Uh, we have quite the audience here, and uh, again, congratulations to you four on the victory, obviously advancing to play Johns Hopkins.
Sorry for the mishap, but it was your first win here in Cedar Rapids. So congratulations on that. Appreciate and best of luck to you for all right? Take it easy, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.